Hey there, so today I want to focus on yet another company that has fallen to Trump derangement syndrome. And when I'm talking about this, my politics in this are moot, just like yours should be. When we're talking about this, what we're talking about is political discrimination. And if companies think that representing themselves this way or comporting themselves online, telling people that they need to F off because they vote a certain way or because they have MAGA in their profile, well, one day they'll decide that something Thing you did, that's not quite suitable for them as well. Now, you can walk away from that, or you can walk away and you can make yourself very vocal when doing that. I think that the vocal portion is preferable because what you're probably talking about here is a social media manager. And even if you're not, well, you're talking about a company within this that represents a number of authors. I mean, when looking at lists like this, for example, look at how many authors that this actually does represent. I mean, I'm just jumping down through here looking at it, and you can see all of the names that are basically being told that we could maximize the profit that you get. We could go out, and we could act like a company should. You know, we could court the dollar. But instead of doing that, what we want to do is talk about Trump and talk about people that are not welcome here. See, I find that amazing. When you talk about how many books that they represent, how many commodities that they are supposed to again maximize profit for and yet. And that and yet, it seems to come up again and again. Now, all of this reminds me of Shadowline Comics. Now, Shadowline Comics is Image Associated. This is one of the co-founders of Image. This is one of their imprints. You know, they all have their imprint out there like Todd McFarlane does, Eric Larson does, and on. So, this person, Nasir here, says, hey, Image Comics, I get my business degree next month. Are you guys hiring? And you can see all the people that he tags in. Well, Shadowline Shadowline Comics uh, social media manager decides to answer this, and this showcases not only how companies see this type of thing, but also is what's acceptable there, because what you'll have at the end of this is the CFO of Image Comics come in and tell this person basically, hey, you need to post under your own account. You don't need to post under Shadowline, but they did nothing about this guy. This guy will run this account into the ground, and you'll notice if you search for it. It doesn't exist anymore. Why? Well, you see the answer here. Does your business degree come with a minor and stop complaining to publishers about comic creators like Layman who call comics uh, gate nitwits uh, out for spreading hate? Not a good look kid will pass. So Nasir answered this saying, I didn't spread any hate. This tweet was almost also over a month old. You never considered me, but you're uh, replying now to try and make some insult. Now, you can see the thing with Layman here. You know, he's talking about F those comic gate losers, you know, while he's going and representing commodities that are associated with the image brand. So this shadow line uh, account here responds, if you self-identify with the comics gate crowd, then you're going to find that most comic pros or creators agree with John. We don't need that sort of toxicity in our industry. And we're certainly not looking to hire folks like that, even with business degrees. Now, the only thing that came from this, too, is the CFO of Image Comics coming out and saying that I think maybe Mark Lombardi might want to post as Mark Lombardi, or make it clear that it's Mark Lombardi whenever you post. When posting as Shadowline Comics, it does make it seem like you're tweeting in a more official capacity, and that's the only thing that came from this, until, of course, this person keeps amplifying this and amplifying amplifying this, and, of course, it destroys their social media profile. And that's what I'm wondering if it'll happen here. So leading up to this, Hard Case Crime has apparently received a submission wherein their argument ensued, and within that argument, Trump's name came up. Now, Hard Case Crime, instead of being professional, decided that they would post part of that correspondence to show just how crazy people are. And, of course, when they're doing that, it showcases a load of bias which you will have in turn see within this and another communication. But I thought this was very telling about where they stand. So after they posted this, they posted the word OK. You know, you can see a whole whopping 15 likes with that. So this person comes in and says, you seem to be lashing out at someone more specific than your tweet indicates. Though I did appreciate you making note of how great President Trump is doing, regardless,
Alice. Take a chill pill, dude. You're tarnishing the halo of brass and gun smoke that I always place over your logo. So this is somebody that's talking about them in a positive way. They're just saying, hey, why don't you chill out right now? You know, this stuff is not a good look for you. So the uh, responses to that, well, they go downhill really quickly. So Hard Case Crime responds, that was our only correspondent who uh, vote Trump's name, not us. I assure you the only way Trump's name would emerge from our lips is as invective. Now, when you see that thrown out there, they're saying the only way we would talk about him is in an insulting way. They're going to be at least hypercritical, but more often that means in a very disparaging light, you know, probably with uh, profanity. A lot of people utilize that when they're going to go out and they're going to utilize profanity. So the response here was, wasn't the brightest move. I know I'm just a local customer. Uh, I only pick up two or three of your titles a year, so not much weight in my opinion, so no worries. Enjoy your life, guy. Should have ended right there. You know, should have actually ended in a different way. You should have had hard case crime come in and do damage control. Right here when you have people saying, I'm a consumer. I'm an existing consumer. You should not go out and further damage stuff. But of course, they don't know that because, well, they suffer from Trump derangement syndrome. So continuing here. Two or three books a year is a fine number to buy and does carry weight with us. But we get the caveat. But but write MAGA in your profile and you can go fuck yourself. Now, what they're talking about fucking yourself for, you can see this person's profile. You notice right there, you can see MAGA written in. So apparently writing that in there is a reason to be insulted. Isn't that a lovely thing? So the person responds back, back at you, guy. It's not there because I had other things I wanted to say, but I'll add it just for you. Thanks for letting me know you're not interested in business you're interested in name calling. I hate to give up reading Collins, but heck, I'll drop him a line and let him know. Hard case crime says, please do. Couldn't make me happier. Person responds, I will. Hopefully he's not suffering from TDS or Trump derangement syndrome as well. I've uh, followed his work since early mistree days. So you're talking about someone that understands someone within this. They're talking about their work so they know this person. Apparently this is not someone Someone just trying to flex on you and say, hey, I buy products. They actually know something about it. But again, they followed your social media profile here. This is the first person to respond to this. Say, I've got a problem with it. Maybe, again, diffusing this, but no, we're going to continue on. As I've said before, I didn't expect any changes, though I did expect at least a professional demeanor. Ah, oh, well, old school civility seems to be a dying art. So they come back again with some more Trump stuff. You know, don't you fucking talk about civility with us and celebrate the least civil person ever to sit in the White House. Don't even try. <laughs> so they want you to buy a product. They told you it carries weight. But of course, if you have any type of opinion, you know, they're going to go out, judge you, and try to again deflect away from where they've been sitting with this. So the person comes back and says, LOL, dude. He's not buying your books. I am or was right there. You lost a customer. Good show right there. My choice of politicians had zero to do with my choice of reading material, nor did I contact you about anything remotely related to politics. You're the one who decided a hashtag in my profile meant more to you than my business. Now they decide that they're going to pick up with other people with wonderful quotes like this. Now I picked this up from Jose Villalobos who captured this, but I mean, looking at this stuff here. The difference is I'm not trying to sell you something unlike the fellow who is trying to get me to buy his book. If you actually want someone to buy something from you, you're ill-advised to act obnoxiously toward that person. But I don't want you to buy anything from me. But you see, we are delighted to lose you as a customer. If I could lose you twice, I gladly would. I'd lose you once a day for eternity with nothing Nothing but pleasure. Now, that same person that posted that posted this as well. I think this is actually uh, good to demonstrate a point. This is one of the comic books that they represent. You can see the Mickey Spillaney's My Camera, who wrote it here. You can see all of the people that are credited within it. And then you can see the sales. Now, these sales at this number under 5,000 units, and even if we were really kind and we added 10% for digital, with these low numbers like that, you're probably talking about 
about a threshold that's less than half of that. But even if we were being nice about it, we would be talking about under 4,500 units. Now, when you're talking about numbers that low, if the person is actually uh, treating that as their commodity, you know, they're bringing it to the table, they're actually uh, portraying it as an independent, then you would be talking about people probably making less than $30 per page for their work. That is an uh, that is a labor-intensive uh, work of love when you do that. Now, if they actually go and they get people to do this for them, I'm sure that they're not making a return on investment. How do I know that? Well, if you look at a lot of companies that put out comic books, what ends up happening is they have a cutoff around 3,800 units unless they're exceptionally small and they keep all of the publication in-house. But normally, when you're looking at, say, an IDW, for example, that cutoff is around 3,800 units. That's when things start to drop off. They're right there. And of course, they're telling people that might potentially pick that up, you're not welcome if... I do not like the you not, you're not welcome if. You know, I find that it's telling me that one day, again, I will not be welcome to pick up something. So I go ahead and I say, okay, I'm going to cut this off now because if you don't understand professionalism, well, I don't have time for you. You know, I have to go and I have to do this in my own personal life. So why would I want to interact with something during my escapism that tries to put rules to that when the only rule, again, should be my money is green. It's not counterfeit. If you want it, well, you know, you need to earn it. But anyhow, tell me what you think about this kind of stuff. This wasn't their only thing out there, too. This is what I chose to highlight within it. If you want to check them out, there's plenty there to go check out. But, you know, I'm, I'm sure that they're probably going to delete some stuff later on. So, again, you know, if you don't like this kind of stuff, tell them politely, but still tell them that you don't appreciate this type of stuff, and especially if you are someone that buys from them, you know, because this stuff, it should not be allowed to stand. If they went out and they insulted the right type of consumer these days, you know, somebody that was represented with another type of brand, you know, especially if they could call themselves marginalized, well, these people, they would be falling all over themselves to apologize. And yet, within this hyper-political climate, somehow, some way, they think that this is okay. And of course, no one, like the mainstream, they won't pick this up because because, well, it's okay with them to go out and insult people that vote away that they don't like. But anyhow, tell me what you think about this. Thank you.